What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're doing OWASP API Security Top 10. So basically this is kind of different than the regular... What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about OWASP API Security Top 10. And it's the same OWASP API Top 10 vulnerabilities. But in today's video and in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about the OS top 10 from the perspective of API what's what's happening behind the curtains um, as you can see here we have around seven tasks in this video we, we're gonna tackle only the first four tasks literally actually we're going to do only two tasks the first two tasks are kind of uh, introduction task 3 and task 4 talks about the first two vulnerabilities now why I am breaking down this into multiple videos I want you guys and I want to assure that you grasp on the concepts and the fundamentals we're going to present in these videos so that's why i broke them down the objective here is not to solve the questions the objective here is to understand the concepts presented in every task so as you know broken level authentication broken uh, sorry broken level broken object level authorization broken user authentication data exposure lack of resources and there is another room by the way all of these are part of the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities but the what makes this challenge stand out is that we are here actually taking API into perspective the API stands for application programming interface and it's the way two software components can communicate with each other so what we're going to do here we're going to take these OWASP top 10s okay in this video and in upcoming videos and we're going to explain them how every single one of them happens behind the curtains using the concept of API or application programming interface so for that purpose we have this lab here this lab as you can see it simulates post and re post requests get requests to a specific server as you can see here and through this, sim this simulation we're going to be able to understand how the actually the actual requests are sent and received to vulnerable and non-vulnerable endpoints so the first vulnerability here is broken object level authorization so you don't have to worry about what's certain in here i'm going to explain everything in a very brief manner so basically broken object level authorization can lead to insecure direct object reference or what's called as or what's named as the idor vulnerability now to explain this in a brief manner let's take the presented url here that's the url we're going to test and let me explain to you guys this concept before we answer the questions okay so we have this um, interface here as i said guys earlier we're going to use this interface to simulate get request post request and later if we need we're going to use other methods and by clicking on send we're actually sending the request to this url Okay. we can actually add parameters headers i'm gonna skip the authorization header here i'm gonna delete this one if we need an authorization like token cookie we're going to add it here in the header and here is the body okay and of course depending on the request the parameters will change for so if i put here post as you can see here i'm required to put the content type it is pre-filled for you guys and here if you want to add email password i'm gonna delete these you can add form parameters because it's post request right so we're gonna read this okay and here the response so whatever you send here if there is a response from the server you will get the response here this is the response code these are the headers and this is the body of the response so much like you can you can actually um, take this uh, similar or make it I mean sorry uh, this is similar to perp suite so in Purpose Suite, we have a proxy interceptor, we intercept the request, we actually see the request, we modify the request, and we will be able to see the response. The same here. Okay, so the first vulnerability is broken authentication, broken authorization. So what happens here? As you can see, this is the URL that we're going to test. And this is the, uh, let me put this get first. So we have mht slash api rule one underscore s slash user slash one. So what seems to be what seems to be happening here is guys we are going to retrieve the details of the user okay whose ID equal to one now up until now that's fine now what this has to do with the idle vulnerability in the idle vulnerability uh, any user whether registered user or not registered user
can make these requests, retrieve user details, user one, user two, user three, without a proper authorization. So this can lead to that exposure, profile information exposure, and as such. So as you can see here, if I am someone who is not registered in the site, okay, or yet registered, but I don't have authorization, or I'm not authorized to view user detail one because I'm not simply user one, right? Or the user whose ID equal to one. I should not be able to see the details of that user. If I can see the details of the user whose ID equal to one, it means I have either vulnerability. I am able to access the uh, object, which is actually the profile information of the user one, by this reference, which is actually not secure. There is no authorization. That's why we call it insecure direct object reference. So if you click on send, so it says set authentication header. Let me take the non secure. This one is secure. So the non secure one is V, replacement with V. The V is the insecure API. Send. Okay. As you can see here, I sent a request to retrieve the details of the user who is ID equal to one. And I was able to do that. As you can see, this is the body. Uh, and we have ID equal one, the username, the name, and the flag. So what happened here, I made a call. Okay. I made a call to the API endpoint. This call here was made from an unauthorized person or without the need to put any authorization headers here. And I was able to retrieve the details. On the other hand, if I use a secure API endpoint, like if you replace V with S in this scenario, and I request to receive the details of the user whose ID equal to one, I will receive an error forbidden. Now that's the typical response you should receive whenever you try to access a resource on the website, okay, which you are not authorized to see. So you should get 403 forbidden. Now what's happening behind the curtains here, as you can see, it requires the authentication header. Now I can set authentication header here, but the problem is I don't have it because I'm not authorized person. Now sometimes, normally, when you are logged into a site and when you request your profile information, you will be actually given an authorization header. This authorization header will allow you to access your information, but if you try to access another user's information, you will uh, get denied access. Now, that's how you prevent the indoor, or uh, sorry, either, the insecure direct object ref reference. Now, here they give an example. This is an example of authorization token. Now, let's see the questions. So the questions here, the flag, we answer the flag. What flag is associated with the user ID 2? So if we go back and type 2 here, still we get an error because we are actually making calls to the AP, uh, secure API endpoint. Let's replace this with V. This is the not secure one, the one that doesn't use authorization headers. And we have the flag of user ID 2. The first question, suppose the employee ID is an integer with incrementing value. Can you check through the vulnerable API endpoint in the total number of employees in the company? So we have up until now two users. If there is a user for ID 2, it means there is a user for ID 1. And there is another user for ID 3. We try this. And we have, if we try 4. There is no, it means we have only three users. What's the name with employee ID equal to three? We place, we replace the four with three and we make the get request. We get the username of the user whose ID equal to three, which happens to be Bob. So that's the first simulation on the IDOR vulnerability. I'm sure most of you guys know this. I'm sure most of you are very familiar with this because it's very easy to detect, very easy. Now let's go to this one broken user authentication so let's use this api for the first thing and we're going to use post request this time as you can see when we use post request we have the content type and we have the option to add form parameters which we require to do okay now without reading all of this let's explain broken user authentication let's go back here so as you can see this is the url slash api rule 2 slash user slash login underscore v 
So here what's going to happen, I'm going to make a post request to log in through this URL. Okay, and after the login, I will be given a token. So let's give an example, add from parameters, name, say email, that's the name of the parameter. And you can put any email that's given in the challenge. So the email here is admin at mht.com admin at mht.com and we click on add password now this is the thing here the password needs to be correct if it's not correct i'm not supposed to be granted access right okay so let's put a random password everything is filled i have the email and password the content type is set i'm ready to make the request to log into this url and retrieve my authorization token as i told you before Whenever you log into your profile in any site, you're given an authorization token, which actually enables you to access resources, including your profile. If you click on send, as expected, I am given, as you can see, the access, and I have assigned, been assigned a token. Now you might be going to ask, might be going to ask me, how you were given the to access token, and we're not sure yet of the password provided. Now that's why this is called the broken authentication. The mechanism of the authentication is not correct. It relies only on the email. If the email is correct, it's going to grant you access and it's going to give you access token. The password is not used here. That's called the broken authentication. Now, sometimes the broken authentication doesn't happen uh, on the password level. Sometimes it requires you an email, it requires a password, but it doesn't require um, a valid cookie a valid um, multi-factor authentication code, a valid session ID. All of these other factors are considered part of a correct authentication mechanism. So sometimes an attacker would be able to know your email and would be able to know your password. But if you have used more than an authentication mechanism like multi-factor authentication, um, physical um, authentication mechanisms like USB, um, CSRF token, all of these are considered added security to authentication mechanism. So any problem on these factors or these authentication methods would cause a broken authentication. A broken authentication would be let anyone with like one single piece of information like the email would be enough for them to log into your account or retrieve details. So as you can see, we retrieve the token. So what we're going to do here, guys, we're going to complete the mission. We take this token, we switch to get request. We provide the authorization token here and we name it authorization. Let's replace info with token. And we're going to now with the token, we're going to make a request to retrieve the details of the user. So the URL is given here, API role to user details. I'm going to click send authorization header not set let's see ah this is auth authorization not authentication I made a mistake let me copy that authorization token and now we send the request as you can see I received the details of the user admin at mhc.com I get the username, the, the name, the token, the address, the city, and the country. So that's how broker authentication works. Now, on the other hand, if I use a secure API endpoint like the one provided in this link, let me see where they provided the secure API. So let me copy that and then go back, switch to post request and change the V with S, delete these, keep only the content type and keep everything as is. We're going to make the same request to retrieve the token of the user admin at msc.com and providing an arbitrary password. Send, as you can see, incorrect username and password. Now it uses the proper authentication mechanism. It doesn't cause broken authentication. Now I know guys that all sites Mostly all of the websites, all of the APIs of the applications uses, sorry, use email and password to authenticate. That's not necessarily an example, a literal example of how broken authentication works. 
it's just a simplified example you should get the count you should get the idea like it doesn't have to be the password that's not uh, needed while while logging in sometimes uh, provided the email and password okay you should require the user another level of authentication like uh, verification code um, token so on and so forth that's how we avoid broken authentication we have to add multiple layers of security and make sure that the existing layers are not compromised so as you can see we make we made the request to this api and we wouldn't be able to get the token because this api requires the use of correct email and password not only correct email so let's scroll down and see the questions can you find the token of the hrmht.com so to be able to do that we have to switch the insecure api v and replace the email with this one sent as you can see this is the token to which country does sales mht belong so again we take the username we replace it in the we replace it with the existing one and we make the request and we get the country so now to get the country we have to make the request to the user details so you grab the token here of that user to be able to retrieve the information and switch to post get request add authorization header authorization token and change the url to this one okay everything is set now you get the details of the user sales at mhc.com and this is the country last question is it a good practice to send username and password and get request um, no if it is transferred in clear text if you would be able to see it in the URL or the body but um, sometimes you might need to send it in the get request so you should if you need to if you need to I'm saying you shouldn't be able to need to by the way it's all happens in the post request and should be encrypted if you need to send it in a get request let's make sure it's encoded properly or encrypted so that was it for today guys in the next video we're going to carry over the upcoming also or rest of the tasks and for now i will see you in the next video